D Limited purchased the machine on the higher purchase system from H Limited. The terms were that they would pay rupees 20,000 down, that is the down payment, on 1st January 1996 and five annual installments of rupees 11,000 each commencing from 1st January 1997. This, this is slight mistake. It's not. 1st January or you can say, yeah, basically 31st December, 31st December 1996. They charge depreciation on the machine at 15% per annum under the diminishing balance method. H Limited had charged interest at 10% per annum, so the necessary accounts in the books of D Limited. Okay? So right now, D Limited is the higher purchaser and H Limited is the higher vendor. Uh, I want from I want to know from you what is given in the problem, what is given to us in the problem, and what is not given to us in the problem. Whatever, whatever you see, something is given and something is missing. So tell me what is given and what is missing. Very good. Cash price is not given. It's one of the most important things because we can't start that table until and unless we know the cash price. So cash price is not given. But what is given to us? We know the down payment, which is 20,000. We also know the annual installments. They said five annual installments of 11,000 each. So every year, the installment is going to be 11,000. So that's what's given to us. They've also asked us to charge depreciation on the WDB method or the diminishing balance method. And they've also given us the date of now the question is how are we going to calculate the cash price? We had a similar problem, I think it was problem 7 and 8 where we did the annuity. Now in those problems, uh, in one of the problems cash price was not given, in one of the problems the installment was not given. But they gave us information with regard to the annuity tables and using those annuity values we were able to calculate either. Okay? But in this problem, Uh, uh, in this problem, nothing has been given to us. Okay, In this problem, nothing has been given to us with regard to the annuity information. We just know the installments and we just know the down payment. Okay, Ritika said add installment and down payment. Okay, uh, Ritika, if, you, if we do what you say, okay, if we do what you say, we say we add the installments and down payment. Will we get the cash price? Let's see. Okay, let's see. It's a good thing you all are coming up with suggestions. So, the down payment is 20,000. The down payment is 20,000 and then there are 5 installments of 11,000. Okay, 5 installments of 11,000. So, we will make it directly 55,000. So, basically this is equal to 75,000. This is equal to 75,000. Now, 75,000 is basically the higher purchase price like how Audrey has said. That is correct. 75,000 is the higher purchase price. How will we know the cash price from this? Rupa is saying less interest. But how will we market minus the interest when the interest has to be calculated on a yearly basis on the outstanding amount? Okay, we can't just take 75,000 into, what's the rate of interest? 10% into 5 years? No. That's not the way we can calculate the interest and then minus it and get the cash price. No. Because normally we calculate the interest, if you remember, on the balance that is outstanding at the uh, beginning or at the end of each year. Okay, so basically we can't do that. We can't do the method that you are suggesting add the installment and then minus. Take only installment and we can assume. Take only installment and we can assume the cash price. How can you assume on the cash price? On what basis will you assume the cash price? What basis will we assume the cash price? Okay. Now, what we can do is normally in a situation like this, okay, where we don't know, there's no other way of calculating the cash price, there are no annuity values given, we start from the back, we start from the last one, we start from the last installment. Now, how much would be the last installment? The last installment, every installment is 11,000, okay, so including that the last installment is 11,000. So, what we do is, now we always know that the installment Listen very carefully. We always know that the installment is a uh, sum of the cash price plus the interest. Installment, we all know this. 
installment is the sum of the cash price plus the interest. So if we start with the last installment, that is in the last year, that's the only thing that is left to pay. So for 11,000, we find the interest component, we minus it and the balance becomes the cash price. So we are going to follow a method like this. Okay, we are going to follow a method like this, but we are going to work backwards. So we are going to call this table, I'm going to call this table calculation of interest and cash price. We don't know, we know the rate of interest, but we don't know the total interest, neither do we know the yearly interest. And based on that, we are also going to get a cash price. Okay, based on that, we are also going to get our cash price. Let me just name this. Now, our table, the headings of the table are going to be slightly different. So, just, just try to understand it. Okay. So, the first one, we are not going to call it year, but we are going to call it installment number. Or we can just say installment. The second one, we are going to call closing balance of cash price. Closing balance of cash price. The third one, we are going to call the installment the fourth one is going to be amount due at the time of installment. Next, we are going to have the interest. And finally, we are going to have the opening balance of cash. Just, just uh, be patient. If you're getting confused, just be patient. As we are doing things, you will be able to better understand. Okay, so just let's go to the columns again. They'll make more sense when we start adding in, uh, adding the figures. So we, the first column that we have, we normally call the installment number. Now I'm not calling it a year because here we are not so particular about the dates in the table. We are only particular about which is the installment, how much is that, how much is the interest in that installment that is included. So installment number. Closing balance of cash price. In case my screen goes off or I get disconnected, just let me know because this, the Google Meet is acting a little weird, strange today. So in case you can't see the problem, just let me know. So installment number, closing balance of cash price. The installment in that year, what is the installment? Basically, our installments are 11,000. So throughout here, we'll have 11,000. Amount due at the time of installment, I'll tell you what this is, the interest that we need to calculate and opening balance of cash price. Like I said, we are going to start from the fifth year or the fifth installment. There are five installments, okay, paid over a period of five years. So, we are going to start with the fifth installment, okay. Now, can anyone tell me, now we are working backwards. Please remember like the initial table we are doing, you try to invert it. Okay, it's, it's the other way around, we are starting from down. What will be the closing balance of the cash price in the last year? You all should know this. What will be the closing balance of the cash? Very good, very good. I've just put a table, the same table in the actual form, otherwise how would we have done it actually? If you see, the closing balance of cash price is this. This is just for you to explain it better to you. <coughs> okay, so basically the closing balance of cash price is nil. How much is the installment? We still pay the installment in the fifth, fifth year. Okay, closing balance of cash prices, we don't have to pay anything further. But how much is the installment? The installment is basically 11,000. Now, amount due at the time of installment is basically, I'll tell you this right now, now itself. It's basically D is equal to, is equal to B plus C. D is equal to B plus C. Okay, just, just remember. So right now if we take D is equal to B plus C, we don't have anything in B, our C is 11,000. So this becomes 11,000. Now how are we going to calculate the interest? Now we know that this 11,000 
potential. This 11,000 is the cash price plus the interest. So basically the interest is included in this. So how are we going to know how much is that interest? We know the rate of interest. We know the rate of interest. Is it 10%? If you say 10% rupa, it becomes 11,000 into 10 divided by 100. 10% is the rate of interest, but can we directly multiply it by 10 by 100 or is it something else? You've done some things like this in the past, maybe in certain problems. Can anyone guess what it would be? What I'm looking, what is, what is the answer I'm looking for? Yes, very good. Okay, now how did this Rishvesh come up with 110? So it's basically going to be 11,000 into 10 upon 110. Now, how did he come up with 110? I hope he knows the reason also why he said 110. Anyway, I will explain it to you. Now, we know that normally just, just bringing, on, bringing it down to the very basics. Okay, We normally have three things. Okay, We normally have the cash price. We normally have the interest. Sorry. We normally have the interest. This is just to explain it to you. And we normally have the installment. These are the three things that we normally have. Okay. Say in our case right now, the cash price, the interest, we already know the interest. The interest is 10. Okay. Forget about percentage and all that. The interest is 10. Okay. Installment as we know is always cash price plus interest. So, we will assume the cash price to be 100. We will assume the cash price to be 100. We will assume the cash price to be 100. So, what will be the installment? What will be the installment? Obviously, if installment is cash price plus interest, installment is going to be 110. This is just for further explanation of why I'm going to use this 110% that this has said. Has said. Okay. So, installment obviously is going to be 110. Okay. So, if we want to find the interest component in this 11,000, we want to find the interest component in this 11,000. What we do? We have a cross multiplication. So we know 11,000 which is the installment, which is the installment. Basically the value of 11,000 here is 110. And we want to know the rate of interest. Rate of interest is how much? Rate of interest is basically 10. So we cross multiply. So 11,000 into 10 upon 110. It's always done like this. Okay, even sometimes you do this when you're calculating the net profit. You may have done this in the past in final account. Sometimes when you have to calculate the net profit and something is already included in it, they normally follow this calculation. So what what I what did I do here? I just did a simple assumption. We assume that the interest, we know that the interest is 10. Uh, installment is always cash, cash price plus interest. So we are assuming that the cash price is 100. So installment becomes cash price plus interest becomes 100 plus 10, 110. Okay. Then we do a simple calculation. We know the installment which is 11,000 that is for 110. For 10 percent how much will it be because we want to find out the interest. Okay. Now in problems now every problem you don't have to sit and do this. This is just an explanation of what has to be done. So if the interest was 5 percent in the problem it would be 11,000 is 105 for 5 it is how much. So every time you will have to multiply the installment into 5 upon 110 or 10 upon 110 or 15 upon 115, whatever is the rate of interest. Why I show this? To tell you how I have got it. So otherwise somebody may assume why I am why I'm dividing it by 110. It's because of this. Okay. So this is basically equal to 11,000 into 10 divided by 110. This is how I Yes, thank you for the answer. So, this is 1000 and how I got that 1000 is basically 11,000 into 10 divided by 110. This is how I got it. Okay, 11,000 into 10 divided by 110. Is this clear? So, in every problem, you don't need to do this calculation. You just take the interest and divide it by 100 plus that interest. Why is it like that? It's because of this. Okay. So, what will be the opening balance of cash price? What will basically be the opening balance of cash price? Cash price is what? How do we get the cash price? 
can anyone tell me what will be this cash price if interest is 1000 uh, installment is 11000 what will be the cash price quick 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 what will be the cash price yes good 10000 so this column you get it as just to make it clear basically this column is F is equal to F is equal to D minus E D minus E. Okay. So we start from the year. Now why can't we start? Why can't we start from the beginning? Okay, because in the beginning there are lots of things that are included. If there are lots of things that are included, we won't be able to find out the correct interest. At the end, what happens is just that installment that's left to pay. So just that one amount that we have and we just have to find out the interest from that. Okay. Let's see if our actual table looks like that. I just did this table for you to understand. Opening balance of cash price is 10,000. Interest is 1,000. Okay. You don't need to do this table. Since it's the first problem, I'm just trying to make the explanation a little easier by showing how it would actually look we are just doing the whole thing backward okay now let's move on to the fourth here okay before i go on any anyone wants me to repeat anything here anyone wants me to repeat any part here before i go on to the fourth one anything anyone wants me to repeat any part okay fine now Fourth year, now we are moving backward, okay. The closing balance of the fourth year, how will you get the closing balance of the cash price in the fourth year? What will it be? What will be the closing balance of cash price in the fourth year? Quick, what will be the closing balance of the cash price? Look here, let's look at this table now. Your opening balance is basically the closing balance of the previous year. Opening balance of the fifth year is the closing balance of the fourth year. Correct? Opening balance of the fifth year is the closing balance of the fourth year. What am I asking you for? The closing balance of the fourth year will be the opening balance of the fifth year. Just the opposite. We are just doing the opposite. Okay? Here it's the, it's the same figure. The closing balance in the fifth year, oh sorry, the opening balance in the fifth year is the closing balance of the fourth year. Closing balance of the fourth year. So what we know is, what we want is the closing balance of the fourth year, which we need to know, which will be our opening balance of the fifth year. Okay. So I'm going to write the same thing here. If you're getting confused, just know that you have to write this amount here. Okay. The previous amount you need to bring here. We know our installment. We know our installment. Every year, the installment is going to remain 11,000. That does not change. Now, you tell me this. Amount due at the time of installment, what will that be? Okay. Basically, in the fourth year, what we are calculating interest on, the total amount due. Okay. The outstanding cash price plus the installment that has to be paid. And by this formula, what do you get? You get 10,000 plus 11,000, which is 21,000. Okay. And if you say 21,000, the interest will be again 21,000 into 10 divided by 110, which gives me 1,9,1,9,0. What is the meaning of this is in the fourth year? In the fourth year, we have to pay the installment plus we still have to pay this 10,000 which we have paid in the fifth year. You understand that? So basically when we are calculating the interest, we don't only have to calculate on the installment but also on the amount due because you are taking another whole year to pay the balance amount due. So you have to pay interest. That's why that suggestion that came right in the beginning that we just take that 75,000, calculate the interest and then minus the interest, that suggestion doesn't work. Because we calculate the interest based on the amount that is outstanding each year. So in the fourth year, you are paying the installment. Plus, you also, when you are calculating the interest, you also have to take into consideration what's the balance still that is left to pay. 
and that is 10,000, which is cleared off in the fifth row. So that's how I get this 21,000. That's how I get this 21,000. So basically, my opening balance of cash price will be D minus E, that is 21,000 minus 1909, that comes to 1909. Okay, so it's the amount minus the interest. So that becomes the opening balance of cash price. Let's see our table. Let's see our table. Opening balance of cash price. The interest. Okay, we are not here. We are not looking so much at this. We are not looking much at this. This column is, uh, we are not calculating anything that is required in this column. Because we don't know how much the cash price paid. That's the whole reason we are doing this calculation. That's the whole reason we are doing this so coming to the third year now, the third year it is 19091, bring down the same thing, installment as usual is 11,000, now what will this total be? It will be 19091 plus 11,000, if you do the total it will come to 10, 20, 30, 39, So when we are calculating the interest, so 30, 30, 9, 1 into 10 upon 110 gives me 2, 7, 3, 6, sorry, 2, 7, 3, Minus the 2 and you will get 27, 27, 3, 5, 5. How I get 27, 3, 5, 5? This minus this. Fine? Then move to the second year. 27, 3, 5, 5. Installment remains constant. This will become 27,355. Five. This will become 38,355. Five. So 38,355. Five. The amount of interest is 3,487. And here we'll have 38355 five minus 3487, you get 34868. And we finally come to our first one 34868, 11,000. This will become 45868. Okay. Now, uh, just one thing here. Now, if you do the same calculation, okay. 45, 45, 8, now, if you do 45868 into 10 upon 110, those who are solving can do and check. 45868 into 10 divided by 110, you basically get 41, 4169.81, which becomes 4170. Okay, just pay attention here. You basically get 4170. Okay, now we are going to do a slight small change. Now to get this amount, 45868 minus 4170, let's see how much we get. 41868 minus 4170, it basically comes to 
front and center. Sorry, 45, 45, 868 minus 4170. You get here, just pay attention, huh? 41698. Okay, yeah, thank you, Rishvesh. You get 41698. Now, what we are going to do is, uh, we have reached the end. Okay, we have reached the end. Uh, basically, uh, this is our cash price without the down payment. So, what we are going to do is we don't want 41,698, we want more of a round figure. Okay, what would be a round figure here? What would be a round figure here? Next round figure, 41,698 is like 2 rupees less to a round figure. So, what would be the round figure here? Yes, 41,700. So, what we do is we make this 41,700 and to make this 41,700, the difference between the two comes to 4168. Okay. Now, I know this is a little confusing. Somebody may ask why we need to do this. Why, one, why can't we just take this? Just to have a round figure. Normally, when the price is quoted, normally when the price is quoted, it's normally not in 416, whatever it was, 41698. Uh, uh, Okay, 41,698. It's normally quoted as a round figure. So, because of that, we do this. So, in the last year, see first, you will have to do the interest calculation. It's not like the problem where I say that will be the balancing figure or something like that. You will have to do the interest calculation. See what interest you get. If you get something which doesn't end up with a round figure, then you make that a round figure and the interest will be a balancing figure. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put an asterisk here and say, Taken as rupees 4168 instead of rupees 4170 for balancing purpose. See, exactly around 2 rupees, 3 rupees. Okay? You can add around 2 or 3 rupees at the most. Now, this round thing, this problem comes up only when in problems. I am going to do another problem where the installments are not equal. For example, 1 year it's 11,000, 1 year it's 13,000, 1 year it's 15,000. I am going to do a problem. Now, if the installments are unequal, this problem doesn't arise. You get a round figure. Only when the installments are equal, this kind of problem arises. Is that clear? So, just remember that you can write it down somewhere in your books. This problem arises only when the installments are equal and only in these problems huh, where this entire cash price is not given and we have to go to calculate it like this. Is that clear? Okay. Now, I want to know from you, have we got our cash price? Have we got our cash price? Have we got our cash price? What is the final amount that we have got here? What is the final amount we have got here? It is 41,700. Okay, can we consider this as our cash price? Let's look at our table. Let's look at our table. Okay, basically we are here. Correct? We are here. If you, we've just got the other way around. We are here. To this, what have we? What do we have to add? To this, we have to add the down payment to get the total cash price. Very good, Prishvish. To this, we have to add the down payment to get the total cash price. What is all this we have done? We have just tried to add the installments and see how much is the interest included in the installments plus the outstanding values and we have arrived at this. This is that first installment that we normally pay. There would, could have been still another uh, column for down payment which we don't have to show here because we don't need to calculate interest on down payment. So basically, our cash price is always the uh, amount that you get here towards the end plus your down payment. Now, in case in the problem there is no down payment, your cash price will be this. There are some problems where there may not be any down payment. Okay, So, that time your cash price will be the figure that you get here. So, actually our cash price is 61,700. Actually our cash price is rupees 61,700. Okay. So, in a situation like this, when cash price is not given and there is no other way of calculating the cash price, we need to reverse the whole any question? Okay. There could be some books and many of your textbooks, if you check in the library, they have eliminated these two columns. But I thought of including these two columns because it makes things simpler. What they do, they just show this 
they show this, this and this. So, fifth year they will write the installment calculated accordingly. Fourth year, how will they get this 21,000? Basically, 10,000 plus the installment. But I feel this makes it a little more simpler. If you want, you can eliminate these two columns. Many books don't have these two columns. Okay, but it shows it, uh, it, shows it more clearly so that this doesn't create any confusion. If you eliminate these two, two columns, you can write this as the installment which is 11,000 plus 10,000. Okay, this will be written as 11,000 plus 19,090. Up to you. You see what you are comfortable with. Is that clear? Any questions with regard to this? I know we are doing something completely different in this problem, but I have explained the logic as to why we are doing it. Okay, and why we have to start from the last year. Any questions? Oh, now we don't have to do another analysis of payment. This is a kind of analysis of payment. What we have calculated in this is our interest every year. And we also know what is the cash price paid and so on. And we, our whole aim was to get this. This is what we need to start our problems with. Okay, to know the actual price of that machine. So it's the amount that we get here plus the 20,000. Any questions? Uh, if you said if no other way, then use reverse method. What other info is needed to solve in the previous way? Yes. Now, a similar problem in the last, not the last lecture is, uh, I think, problem 7, sorry, problem 7 or 8, where we did the annuity. Okay. I'll just open that problem just to make things a little clear. So, uh, they have asked us to open the ledger accounts in the books of, show the necessary ledger accounts in the books of delimited. Okay. Another thing I would like to tell you. Now, they have also said depreciation. Now, normally when, where we used to do depreciation, we used to do it here. Now, to calculate depreciation year wise from, back, from the back, it's very difficult. Especially when it's a diminishing balance method because we don't know the cash price yet. We don't know the opening balance yet. So, in a problem like this, we keep depreciation directly for the ledger accounts. I won't say it's advisable to do depreciation here unless you want to make a separate column to the end after you finish this and then calculate depreciation all over again. So in a problem like this, I advise you to keep depreciation for the uh, keep the depreciation calculation for the account for the ledger account. It becomes easier, it's faster as well. Okay. So let's see what are the accounts we have to open in the books of D Limited. In the books of D Limited, we have the machine account. We have the machine account. Then we have the higher vendors account, who's H Limited. H Limited account. Then we have an interest account. Interest account. And I've opened another account here. Now this account I've opened because. Some few people asked me, what if a depreciation account is there? Okay, How do I show that entry, profit and loss account, debit to depreciation? Okay, Just because of that, since there is depreciation in this problem and I can show it, I'm just showing a depreciation account. Mostly, they don't ask you to open the depreciation account. But in case they do, this is the way it is. Okay, It's exactly like your interest account. Now, depreciation account again is required only when there's depreciation in the Problem. Now, I am not doing depreciation because we have done a different type of problem. Please do not uh, link it to that. I am just doing depreciation because in the past few days, some people have asked me how a depreciation account would look. And since depreciation is there in the problem, I am just showing the depreciation account. Okay. So, let us start. The first entry is recording the purchase. So, it will be in the books of the higher purchaser. Machine account debit to uh, the higher purchase, uh, higher vendor's name that is H Limited. So on, have they given us the dates? Yes, on 1st January 96. So on 1st January 96 to H Limited. Always by the cash price. Always by the cash price. That's why we the cash price is so important. Okay, always by the cash price. So, the cash price is this amount plus the down payment which is 61.7. So, if we say 2 H limited here, in H limited it will be 
1st January 96 by machine account. That is 61.70. Next, we move on to the down payment. Okay, the down payment will be H limited to bank on at the beginning itself. The agreement is signed to bank. <coughs> the down payment is 20,000. So we have done our first two entries that happen only in the first year. Now we move on to our sequence. So we first show the interest that is outstanding. So interest account debit to H limited. So in H limited it will be by interest. At the end of the year. By interest. Okay. Now please be careful. Please be careful. Which will be the interest amount? Which will be the interest amount? Quick, quick, quick. Look at the table and tell me which is the interest amount. Very good. Please don't take it right from the beginning, okay? Because this is a reverse table. We have started from the back. So don't take 1000. It goes this way now. Okay, so our interest in the first year is 4168. Interest in the first year is 4168. So if you say buy interest here, an interest will be on the same day, 31st December. 96 to H limit 4168. Then we make the payment of the installment. So here we have on 31st in H limited, 31st December 96. To bank again. Okay. Installment will always be the same. How much is the installment? It's always 11,000. Because when we pay the installment, we are paying the cash price plus the interest. Okay, So it's always going to be 11,000. Don't get confused with that. 11,000. We also have to charge depreciation in this problem. Before closing, we also have to charge depreciation. So depreciation is depreciation account to a set account. So in machine account, it will be by depreciation. by depreciation. Okay. So, you will have to actually calculate the amount. It will be 61,700 into what's the rate of depreciation? I think it's 15%. Yes. 15%. 61,700 into 15% gives me 9255. Okay. 61,700 into 15%. Just write it here. You don't need to write this. Now, since we have opened the depreciation account, we will have to post this entry accordingly. So, if you say by depreciation, here it will be 2 to what? 31st December 96. What will it be? 2 machine. Amount is 9255. 9255. Okay, so we have posted all the entries. Right now we have to close. And whilst closing, where we transfer that last entry, which uh, some people were inquiring about, the last entry is profit and loss account debit to interest to depreciation. Or profit and loss account debit to interest account, profit and loss account debit to depreciation account. So, if it's profit and loss account, debit to depreciation account, in depreciation, what will it be? By P and L account. 9255. Similarly, in interest, same thing. We transfer the interest to the PNL account. The interest is 4168. Okay. Close this. The total here is 
So, two balance carry down will be sixty five eight six eight minus twenty thousand. Uh, Sixty five eight six eight minus the total here is don't have the figure with me. Anyone has got it? Eight six eight minus thirty one thousand, which is thirty four eight six eight. Okay, close the mystery. Uh, bring down the balance first so that we don't forget about it. So on first January ninety-seven, by balance brought down thirty-four eight six eight. Okay, close the machine account. Thirty-first December ninety-six. By balance carry down. The amount is fifty two four four five. So this will be sixty one seven hundred. Sixty one seven hundred. First January ninety seven. Two balance brought down. Will be fifty two four four five. So we have finished the we have finished the first year. Okay. Now we move on to the second year. Same thing again. We need to show the interest. Thirty first Copy this. By interest, thirty first December ninety seven. The interest in the second year is, mind you, it's three four eight seven. Okay. Three four eight seven. Same thing in the interest account. You will have it as thirty first December. Ninety-seven, two H Limited, three four eight seven. Okay. Then we also have to show the installment. Thirty-first December, ninety-seven, two bank. Installment is always seven thousand. And finally, we charge depreciation. Now, by depreciation, on which amount will you calculate the depreciation? Quick, on which amount will you calculate the depreciation? Quick, can somebody tell me which amount will you calculate the depreciation? Very good. If it was a fixed instalment method, it would have always been the whole, uh, throughout the five years it would be nine two five five. It was a fixed instalment or original cost method. This is their diminishing balance method or the written down value method. That's why the depreciation is on the opening balance. That's why I said it's easier to calculate the depreciation here itself instead of doing it in that table there. Okay. So fifty two four four five into fifteen percent gives me seven eight six seven. Seven eight six. Seven. Now we have to close. Ah, sorry. If we pass the depreciation there, we have to also show the depreciation since we have opened the depreciation account.
So the depreciation is 7867. 7867. And that's the last entry. So now we need to close it by transferring it to the profit and loss. Okay. So 7867. Similarly, you transfer the interest to the profit and loss account. 3487. Also, close this. This will be 34868 plus 38355. Five, five. Two balance carry down thirty eight three five five minus eleven thousand will be twenty seven three five five. Bring down the balance first. Buy balance brought down first January ninety eight twenty seven five five. We still have yet to close the machine accounts. So buy balance carry down here will be. 52445 minus 7867, we get 44578. Close this. 52445. 52445. So we have started now, we need to start our third year. So again, we start with the interest. So the interest. By interest, third year interest is 2736. Then in the interest account, so the same thing. Two, seven, three, six. Go pay the installment. Once the installment is paid, then charge the depreciation. So here, depreciation will be by depreciation on which amount now? On the opening balance. So it's going to be 4457. Forty four five seven eight. So forty four five seven eight into fifteen percent gives me six six eight seven. Okay. So if we say by depreciation here, since we have opened a separate depreciation account, will be ninety eight. Amount of depreciation is six six eight. Then it's time to close by transferring these two to the profit and loss account. Okay. 
out is 6, 6, 8, 7. Transfer the interest as well. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight, two seven three six, and close this. Total here is twenty-seven three five five plus two seven three six. Thirty zero. I think I got disconnected. Can I see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is 3091, 30, Two balance carry down. Is thirty nine zero nine one. Bring down the balance so that you don't forget it. Ninety nine by balance brought down. It will be nineteen zero nine. Go and close the machine account. Total is forty four five seven eight, forty four five seventy eight. So balance will be forty four five seventy eight minus. 6687 gives us 37891. 7891. Bring down the balance. Thirty-seven eight nine. So we move to the last year, uh, sorry, still two more years, past the interest entry in the fourth year. Interest in the fourth year, let's check our interest, is 1909, 1909, show that in the interest account. One nine zero nine. Pay the installment. This is eleven thousand. Pass the depreciation entry. Calculate the depreciation. So now the depreciation will be on 37891. 37891. 37891 into 15% gives uh, 5684. 5684. So the depreciation and the depreciation account amount is Then it's time to close. Five 
five, six, eight, four. Similarly, close the interest. One nine zero nine. Close the higher vendors account. Total will be one nine zero nine. Twenty one thousand. Twenty one thousand. Two balance carried down. Will basically be. Bring down the balance. Two thousand. By balance brought down will be ten thousand. Then close the depreciation. Uh, Uh, close the machine account. This is thirty-seven eight nine one. Thirty-seven eight nine one. The balance carried down is thirty-two two zero seven. Bring down the balance before we proceed to the last year. Thirty-two, thirty-two two zero seven. And the last interest. Last interest. Let's check our last interest is one thousand. Okay. So if we say uh, by interest, here we have to say H limited. This is one thousand. Then pay the installment. You see, your higher vendors account is already balanced. After paying the instalment, show the depreciation. By depreciation on thirty two two zero seven. Amount is last depreciation is four eight three one. So put it in the depreciation account four eight three one. Now it's time to close. Four, eight, one. Similarly, close this. One thousand. This is balancing already. There's no balance carried down. Like I said, it not always balances. There's no balancing figure because that's the end of it. There's nothing else left to pay. Machinery account or your asset account will normally have a balance because the asset doesn't disappear. Okay, the asset still exists. So 
by balance carry down here 32207 32207 this will be by balance carry down is the last year 4831 sorry not 4831 27376 